Joining us right now is former New York Lieutenant Governor and Trump supporter Betsy McCoy. Also with us is Chuck Roca. He is Democratic strategist and president of Solidarity Strategies. Good to see you both. Thank you so much for joining us. So these emails, Betsy, give us your take here and, and the timing of it, obviously, well, important right before. Very important, but days. this lays out the Clinton triangle, yeah. how the Clinton family profiteered from Hillary Clinton's position as Secretary, of, as Secretary of State. Bill Clinton would break in millions of dollars and put it in his own pocket for speaking fees and appointments of one sort or another, and then also mega millions for the Clinton Foundation, and then he would send his... Uh, payers over to the State Department for whatever they needed, access to Hillary Clinton, decisions, dinners, and a lot of this is laid out in these WikiLeaks. Laureate University paying Bill Clinton $18 million for advice. That's more than the president of Harvard University owns, uh, yeah. earns. So this is really shocking. And in the, in, the, in the process, they also violated laws, including tax laws, by failing to report gifts from foreign governments required by the IRS. Yeah, Chuck, obviously this doesn't look good. Not good timing with 11 days before the election for Hillary Clinton. Well, I run campaigns for a living, and optics is something you have to worry about, and this does not look good. Of course, obviously, if they'd have broke any law, they'd be in the jail. But right, what this thing shows you is what a lot of people think, right? And so they have to be able to pivot from this and go. And Donald Trump could have taken great advantage of this as just a strategist. And let me remind everybody, I've run a campaign against Hillary Clinton in the primary. There are things out there you can use to try to talk about the issues, but a lot of this campaign has not been about talking about the issues yeah. because of things that Donald Trump has said or other folks have said when we could have been talking talking about Obamacare and, and debating the issues, talking about the foundation and debating the issues. We really never got to have that debate this evening. And, I, and much like my friend Dagan, that's why I got the puffy face, because I got 11 days left and I don't know if I'm going to make it. <laughs> so let me tell you, I'm sure that the Democrats don't want to talk about Obamacare, mm. but the fact is, uh, it's very, very clear that whatever the Hillary Clinton has done as Secretary of State, she's going to do it many fold more mm. when she has the whole U.S. government to sell just, instead of just the State Department. And that's part of the worry. She refused to yeah. put any limits on this when she was Secretary of State. The Senate pushed her to do it and she refused. Yeah. And now she has refused to close this foundation. What do you say? What do you say? Chuck, yeah, you sound like, I mean, this is obviously a great gift to the Trump campaign when you think about Obamacare and these WikiLeaks and the whole Clinton Inc. Uh, scandal, but you sound like you don't think it's enough to change the narrative this close to the election. Is that, is what, that, is that what you're saying? Well, it's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest. When you run a campaign, you have an organized structure of multi-layered communication that goes on that if I was the opponent of Hillary, we would have had a plan to lay this out. There'd be TV commercials. There'd be ground operations where we were knocking on people's doors of just those people who were targeted, undecided people who we knew we could move, who may feel a little untrustworthy, where well, you can move those people one way or the other through digital advertising with a layered march, march, march of that issue. It's kind of been out there some, but not in the mainstream media. And that's where you lost it this year on not having 11 days to go and we still aren't there. Yeah, take it. Yeah. Chuck, I, I, I mean, one of the issues, you, you talked about untrustworthiness. How on earth are people supposed to trust Hillary Clinton right now? Well, I think you would see a different dynamic if she wasn't running against Donald Trump. When I was running <laughs> Bernie sure. Sanders' campaign, right, we, we never had to even say the, pres the secretary's name. We never did any negative campaigning. And we almost won. We won 22 states. So you knew there was an undertow out there. So I think some people out there that are in the middle of the road are picking the lesser of two evils. Hmm. For sure. Well, and you're seeing that in the polls in terms of the independent. Yeah. In terms of Donald Trump in the new Fox News poll gaining, gaining the lead. Gain, he already had a lead. Yeah. And now he gained in the lead. And I think it's just so important that people understand that it's not necessarily just about Donald Trump. This is a vote against the establishment. People want to. A, a big change Stop in Washington, the D.C. Look, they're like, this is not, they're not working for me. They're working for I, I, It's the a future it's of a our movement. nation exactly. is at stake. We will never have the rule of law again if Mrs. Clinton is president. And I will predict, if she becomes the first woman president, she will also be the first president in the 21st century to be impeached because she is not leaving her corrupt ways behind. Well, I, I, I just point to a, the Kimberly Strassel editorial, which is in the Wall Street Journal, Potomac Watch, every Friday. And in her lead paragraph, a Hillary Clinton presidency will be built from the ground up on self-dealing, crony favors, and an utter disregard for the law. Yeah. Last night, I was watching Charles Krauthammer on Special Report, and he really hit it on the head in terms of this Doug Band memo. If people want to go and read the, read the whole thing that came out of the WikiLeaks hack, 
He said, now we know how they, the Clintons, got obscenely rich without visible work. Mm -hmm. That's right. Trump was building buildings. And what were they doing? How did they amass well over a hundred million dollars in just a few years? Yeah, because Doug Band and Teneo were setting up speeches, setting up deals. Uh, and obviously it did include access to the State Department. Lee Carter, we're happy you're here today because you looked at this week's campaign highlights and you put them to the dial test. Let's listen. Uh, explain the yellow, green, and red lines first okay. to make it real clear. Yeah, so the yellow line is independence, and that's the most important one to watch right now because that's where this election is yes. going to be won or lost. We've got the red line is Republicans, the blue line is Democrats. They don't surprise me as much as these yellow lines because we're seeing that independents are really breaking hard for Donald Trump again. We saw it earlier in the campaign. They lost him for a little bit. Watch them now. Uh, this is when Hillary Clinton was questioned about WikiLeaks. Watch. No, I have nothing to say about WikiLeaks other than that I think we should all be concerned about what the Russians are trying to do to our election and using WikiLeaks uh, very blatantly to try to influence the outcome of the election. And I have no concerns about the first question whatsoever. All right, so thanks very much. Lee, walk us through what was going on there. We saw we saw the yellow line coming down. It was it was on the floor, and this is really voters are reacting on a second by second basis. Mm -hmm. You can see as soon as Hillary Clinton pivoted to the response about and, and, and went over and started talking about this as an issue about Russia, folks just dropped to the floor. Right. Independents are not buying this argument, so they're reacting. And as soon as they hear that, they say, "No way, I'm not buying it." And so this is we're just measuring how people are reaction reacting. What we see, we send this out to a thousand voters, right. and it's the reactions that we see. And frankly, you know, pivoting is a, is a communication strategy that we see all the time. Mm. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This does not work. People want, people want an answer. They're sticking to it. We saw them start this whole Russia narrative at the Democratic National Convention, Dagan. Right. Remember, that's where they started it, and they just have been driving it home the whole and, election. And, and Trump has done himself no favors because he, he piled onto it and made, made that joke, uh, joke about Russia. I want to ask Chuck one thing. Chuck, you look back when you were working on the Sanders campaign, and don't you wish these WikiLeaks emails <laughs> came out then? Well, it would be interesting to see those in the days of the primary when I was a paid consultant for Bernie, and I think there would have been a different election. But I don't look back. I'll have to look forward. And what I was thinking about when Lee was talking about the dial testing was right now in the elections, people are coming home, and people are already voting. In Nevada, 80% of people will have voted early before Election Day. So the election is happening right now. In my world, I'm doing phones and mail and reminding them to vote right now. And remember, if you lean a little bit more conservative, you're going to be more apt to go that way. So I think a lot of good things are happening across the country today. All right. All right, we'll leave it there.